Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're going to talk about what's new in Fusion for March 25, 2025. So like most of these videos, we're not going to cover everything that's been updated. We're going to talk about a couple of ones that I think will make a difference in most modeling approaches. And I'll, of course, I'll put a link in the description to the What's New blog post. You can always go up to your help menu and go to What's New. That'll take you directly there at any point in time as well. So in this video, we're going to cover the update to auto constraint, DXF exports, uh, measurements, default units, configurations on the fly, and I'll probably mention a couple of other things in there. But first, I think I need to address performance. Fusion's been updating and talking about performance improvements for quite some time. Uh, and, and I think that uh, the comments that I get, and I can also confirm, that performance has degraded in many instances. I will say that I'm not sure if it's a Windows 10 or a Windows 11 problem. I do have systems on Windows 10 and Windows 11, but the problem is they're not the identical system. So I don't have a great benchmark or baseline to say whether or not it's the operating system or whether or not it's something else in the computer. I will tell you that with this update, it did force me to update my graphics driver. And I'm hoping that that is part of the problem. But what I would say that anybody that's having performance trouble in Fusion, the first thing I would suggest is go to your help menu to support and diagnostics. Make sure that you run a graphic diagnostic. Make sure that your, um, your, graphics, is up, your graphics card driver is up to date. And just check some of these general settings. Then I would say go into support and diagnostics go into the service utility and inside of here double check your network diagnostic make sure that all the ports that are required are open nothing's blocked by the firewall there are cases where a couple of these ports could be blocked and fusion will still work but it will lag and sort of hang up a lot of the designs that i do deal with meshes so i'm already at a disadvantage because i generally have large meshes in the fusion design so i'm not 100 percent sure if the lag on my end is because of that uh, but the last thing I would say is under support and diagnostics, there is this report performance issue. And I, I do this all the time. If there is something that you're doing repeatedly that is hanging up or lagging or causing a problem, you can start gathering data. And basically this is going to record what's going on in Fusion while you're doing these operations, like opening a design or editing a fillet or whatever the case might be. If you don't want to record that data, you can just skip to the questionnaire and say what's going on. And that would, again, provide more information, some feedback to Autodesk. I generally do that when I have a recurring issue. So if something is hanging up, but I'm not sure if it's based on the size of a mesh in a design or based on something I'm doing, if it recurs, if it happens over and over again, then I'll record that and I'll send it off and say, look, this is what's going on. I'm editing a fillet or something like that and pass that information along to hopefully improve it. Uh, again, I am still doing some benchmarking tests. I'm trying to figure out if there are some settings that can be changed or if, or if something in general is causing the problem, but I have also noticed that performance hit. So I just do want to echo that. I've got a lot of comments about the performance or the performance change in Fusion anyways. Okay, so now on to what's new. The first thing that we're going to talk about is auto constraint. When this first came out, I kind of gave my feedback on it. I said, really, the only place I found it useful is if you're trying to auto constrain and dimension a complex curve, like a spline or something. It's still not a perfect solution, but it can help in those cases if you're trying to lock something down with dimensions and constraints. The change that's happened in this version of Fusion really comes down to giving us some more flexibility or options, but I don't think it's changed enough that I, that I think it's valid. So I'm gonna give you an example here. This sketch is something that I threw together quickly and I dimensioned and constrained it on the fly and it was really quick. Now, if I repeat that process and I go ahead and I just start a new sketch and let's say that I wanna create that same thing. So I'm gonna come over to the left, go up about 50, um, over, down, I'm accidentally messing some stuff up here. I'm going to come up. Um, also, Autodesk, if you're listening, this green check mark has always been a pain in my side. That and also the dialog boxes that pop up near the cursor always get in the way. So let's say that we've got this and we want it to be symmetric. So I'm going to go ahead and toss in a line from the midpoint to here. Uh, looks like I got an extra little line in there. Make sure that's at the midpoint, make sure that it's construction, and we're good to go. 
right? So make that vertical, giving it the best possible chance I can. So now when I go to automate and I start to generate constraints, what's gonna happen is it's gonna start applying these dimensions. It, you can see here that we've got a collinear constraint. So it was close enough within tolerance that it was able to get that collinear constraint. So that's perfect, but it still doesn't really approach the symmetry of the design in the way that I would approach it, right? So we've got this dimension, let's say that's from the base that comes up. We've got this one from the base comes up, that's fine. We can play around with this, the slider that's been the new addition and you can say, okay, well, I want that dimension and that dimension, but the rest I'll take care of manually. In, in my opinion, that doesn't give enough result, enough of a result to make it worth the time to use it. Now there are some options. We can reset the datum if we want everything to come from the middle and allow it to regenerate, for example. Um, it still doesn't completely use that because you can see we've got the full width here based on uh, you know that left corner. But again, it's kind of hit or miss. There are some benefits because it is now getting collinear if they're close enough. But in reality, I would want, uh, you know, let's go ahead and deselect that. I would want to make geometry either equal or collinear in these cases. And it really doesn't take all that much for us to manually get these to be fully defined and fully constrained. So I can say 50 millimeters. Maybe I want this to be down 12. Give it a width, 25. And I give this one an overall width of 75. So this is the dimension scheme that I would want to use on this. And, and again, it's just not quite there. I don't think it is, has evolved enough to the point where I think that it would be useful. Hopefully it gets better. I, I'm going to see that there are going to be more improvements to it. And I'm going to keep an eye on it to see whether or not it's going to be useful. But I still would lean toward teaching a new user to dimension and constrain their own sketches and understand how they work. If for some reason you're importing a... DXF from another program and you want to try to use auto constraint, that might save you a bunch of time. But for the most part, I still think it's best practice to do it on your own. This, the next thing that's been updated is DXF export. Uh, now it's, it's not perfect, but there have been some improvements. So if you're exporting a flat pattern from sheet metal, or if you're exporting a sketch as a DXF, we can now configure the units as well as whether or not we want things like points, projected geometry, and construction geometry to go with it. What I think would be extremely helpful is if we could also do that from an extrude, like a planar face. Uh, and I also want to talk about one more gripe that I have here. So a lot of times this little dialog box pops up in the way of what I'm trying to do. Um, it's common because it pops up wherever your cursor is. So if you're using shortcut keys or like the marking menu, for example, um, a lot of times that will just pop up in the way. I really wish that we could dock it somewhere out of the way or, or give a distance away from the cursor that it should be because it's always in the wrong place. Uh, but again, what I would want to see as an update to this DXF export is the ability to do this from a planar face. And the main reason for that is because as we build designs, it's almost never going to happen that everything that you need to export as a DXF happens in one sketch. Well, let's say that we end up having to round all these corners off and we decided to do it at the feature level. And now we want to export this. Well, in order to do that, we need to create a sketch. And then we can now take that sketch and export it as a DXF. So again, it's just an extra step that we have to go through to make this happen. It would be nice if we could just select a planar face and export it as a DXF. So again, improvement, it's helpful. There is still more that could be done, I think, to make it a, a really useful tool. Uh, the next thing that has been updated is the measurement dialog that pops up in the bottom right-hand corner. Again, this is a minor update, but it's something that I think is actually pretty helpful. Now, if you select connected curves, it'll give you the total length of those. In the past, it would just tell you the distance between them, for example, it would not give you a, a total distance. But now if they're connected, so for example, if I select this arc, a straight line and this arc, it gives me the total length of all of those selected because they're connected. Now, if I happen to select this one and this one, it's gonna give me the distance between them. But you know, we, we now have the ability to have a total length of our selected connected curves. Again, that's, that's pretty helpful. It can come in handy, especially when you're using things like splines. 
and maybe we need something that has to unwrap to be this length. We now can see it's about 188 millimeters long. Another thing that's updated is actually in the units. We now have the ability to select not only the distance unit, but also the mass. So there are, of course, some defaults, millimeters and grams, for example. But we can now customize this. For example, if we wanted to have um, ounces and millimeters, we can customize that. So that way, when we go to the properties, what we're going to see is the mass of the design in ounce mass, in this case, instead of grams or kilograms or, or whatever units you're using. So this is nice that we now have the ability to configure a custom unit system that includes the mass. And the default unit systems will also now list the mass for you there. It's always been there, but it hasn't really been configurable unless you're in simulation or generative design. But now it's configurable at the design level. Okay. The, the last real thing that I want to cover is configurations. I haven't really talked about configurations much in the past couple updates, even though there are updates that are happening. But in one of the recent updates, we've gotten the ability to configure features on the fly. And so I'll show you here the extrude dialog. You can see that there's no extra tabs up here. But if we start a new configuration, and I just create a second configuration here, now, if I use extrude, we have a configure tab. Depending on what we're doing, so for example, if I select this face here and I change the taper angle and I take a look at this, we can do distance and taper angle as configurable features. And what this means, if I say, okay, and go back to my configuration table, the angle as well as those distances are going to be configurable in here. So I could say I want one version to be 10 millimeters, the other version to be 15. So we can go back and forth between these and we can see that. Now, the update that happened in this version is we now have that ability with other features that include surface tools. So for example, if I am gonna offset this inward, I can go to configure and now I can configure that distance value. Having the ability to do that and configure that distance value is something that is helpful. And you can see that it applies across the board, uh, at least to all the surfacing tools that I've tried it on so far. We have configure here where we can configure the distance. And the reason that this is important is because now if we're using surface tools for complex designs, let's say we wanted to split this, extend the surface, and then we want to maybe remove that inside piece, we can go back and forth between these configurations and we can allow them to update based on those settings. So this distance, in this case, it's not really gonna matter, but for the most part, we now have the ability to, let's say, let's make this minus eight millimeters. You can see that that inside is now changing from 10 millimeters to eight millimeters based on the offset of our surfaces. So again, all of these updates here that I've shown, technically they're pretty minor, but they're enough that I felt they could be useful in standard workflows part modeling, especially if you're using configurations, knowing that you can now configure surface features is pretty important. Well, configure them on the fly. You could configure them before manually, but now you can do it on the fly. There are a couple of other things that have updated that are important, things like uh, SVG logos can now be used on PCBs instead of just a DXF or a DWG. There are improvements to the, the Fastener library. More Fasteners have been added, for example. I'm going to go ahead and just put a link to the blog post. And again, you can go to your help menu and go to what's new and see all of that. Most of that stuff, there are minor improvements or improvements that are outside of most of the content that we cover on this channel. So if you are interested in that and you want to see videos on something that is what's new that maybe isn't working right for you or you just want more information, leave a comment and let me know and I'll try to cover that in a future video. But if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.